we need to talk about butterflies, specifically monarch butterflies. You may have heard all sorts of cool things about these beautiful and invaluable pollinators, but let's get down to the nitty gritty. How does an egg the size of a chia seed turn into a very hungry caterpillar that then turns into a winged wonder, new superhero name I called it, that helps pollinate countless flowers and crops? To answer this question, let's follow a caterpillar through the process. Four times a year, monarch butterflies lay their eggs exclusively on milkweed plants. Why milkweed plants? Because it's the only plant those fickle baby caterpillars will eat. Well, and because it provides an amazing chemical defense for the butterflies throughout their lifetimes. The milky sap inside the plant contains toxins called cardenolides. Say that ten times fast. But you know who remains unfazed by these toxins? You guessed it, the monarch caterpillar. Thanks to a beneficial mutation, they can snack on all the milkweed their tiny bodies can handle, and they won't vomit or have heart attacks like other insects would. Sick, I know. Our caterpillar is immediately hungry upon hatching, so it does the only logical thing. It eats the remnants of its egg. And while this seems a little weird to me, it's honestly super smart because that egg provides the first boost of energy our caterpillar desperately needs. Once they finish their omelet, they check out the milkweed plant their mom left them on and they begin eating. And they eat and eat and eat for approximately 7 to 17 days. They ultimately outgrow their skin suit as they plump up, so they shed their skin five times throughout their feeding frenzy. And each stage of growth and shedding is called an instar. At the end of the fifth instar, our caterpillar is no longer a little baby. It has grown about 2,000 times its original size and will be about two inches long. Similarly to when you eat too much turkey and need a nap, the caterpillar will realize suddenly how tired and full it is and decide it needs to take a one to two week nap. It will crawl to the top of a branch, leaf, or enclosure and use its mouth to spin a silk pad. You heard me correctly. They use their mouths to cosplay as Spider-Man and build super strong silk pads to hang from. Once our caterpillar silk pad is complete, it will hang upside down and prepare to enter its chrysalis. Fun fact, butterflies transform in chrysalises while moths transform in cocoons. You might be wondering exactly what goes on inside the chrysalis of our soon-to-be butterfly. And let me tell you, it's not pretty. Our cute little caterpillar turns itself into caterpillar soup. And while it's not the kind of soup you'd want to order at a restaurant, it does have just the right mix of ingredients cells that the butterfly needs. Imaginal discs, aka cells that will turn into legs, mouth parts, and wings, remain after the caterpillar disintegrates and work with the nutrient-rich soup to turn into an adult monarch butterfly. Once all body parts are accounted for, our butterfly can emerge. After busting out, our butterfly hangs upside down for a few hours to dry its wings and allow blood to pump through its body. This allows the butterfly to be strong enough to fly. At this point, we become empty nesters because our once tiny little caterpillar is now a fully formed butterfly ready to get a job already as a pollinator. They'll fly off and get to enjoy a life of drinking nectar, pollinating gardens and farm fields, and being toxic to predators. So cool. If you want to help sustain your local monarch butterfly populations, plant native milkweed. It's the number one thing they need to do their jobs and survive.